Hello, Ryan Recker here along with Michelle Wright as we are reflecting on a very special anniversary. 20 years ago today, nine miners were rescued at the Q Creek Mine in Somerset County and Michelle was there to cover it for Pittsburgh's Action News 4 and Michelle has put together some retrospective pieces that you'll see throughout our newscasts here later on today. And I want to take some time here while we have more time here online uh, to talk about your reflections and what you remember when you first heard the news of them being trapped and then the days in between and then of course the the celebratory end to all of it when they were rescued. Yeah, what an ending, real miracle. So many of you have stopped me over the years to talk about watching these moments live on television. And I talked to some of these guys, these are some of the miners, and, and you recognize the guy on the far right is then Governor Mark Schweiker, who was there for that. Um, we have so much to share with you today as we celebrate 20 years. We first heard about it on a Wednesday night. I was here at the station. We knew there had been a catastrophe at the mine. Uh, our crew went out there and it was an empty field. A couple of guys were trying to determine where to dig. They picked this site that you see, this is Dormel Farm, and they did so many things that had never been done before. They called in something known now as GPS, a global positioning satellite to try to determine underground what the highest point would be. They made a complete guess the men would make it there and they were right on the money. They made it there, they drilled down an air hole first, and that was critical because carbon was in there and the men would have suffocated quickly. But that oxygen made all the difference and they just happened to pick the exact right spot. And then they did something else, you know, what happened for those of you who don't remember exactly, they were digging as miners do and they accidentally breached a wall to an abandoned next door mine that was not marked correctly on the map. So a bad map caused this problem. When they breached the mine, millions of gallons of water poured in. And we could see the entrance to the mine was flooded. I know you remember those sites well, and a lot of people thought that they were gonna drown. This all coming less than a year after that area, Somerset County was rocked by September 11th. 2001. That is part of the backdrop to this story as well. That community had been through so much already with 9-11. It was just down the street where Flight 93 crashed into the field and of course that ending was that there were no survivors. Uh, this time these guys came and the rescue crews, not really knowing if they were alive or not, kept going for 77 hours and I remember the news that they were all alive and it was miraculous. We were kind of just dumbstruck by the thought that not only was one person alive down there for all this time, but all of them were alive and they were brought up in this specialty made capsule. So that capsule, which you see still here in this museum uh, behind them, and we have video of them, one of them climbing in there to show us how it worked. The capsule had never been used before, so they had to design a way. They were 240 feet down in the earth. They had to figure out a way to get air to them. They also did something that had never been done before, and that's pressurized air. So the water was coming in, and they thought, we've got to keep the water away, so they pumped down pressurized air. That's all over my head. <laughs> but it worked. Somehow, this theory that they had worked, it kept the water away. So they were in this air bubble down there, um, and then they had that capsule and they had to get a drill. Um, and remember, the drill bit broke right. into it after the first day of drilling, and then it clogged the, the rescue hole. Then they had to make something to take the drill out, the drill bit out and get another drill in. But um, so many people throughout the area were praying. People around the world were watching this live. We, of course, were just going nonstop commercial free for this time. but. Um, just kudos not only to the miners who kept it together and survived, but all of these rescue crews above ground. You relayed an anecdote earlier this morning on our newscast that you had never told before about some of the communication <laughs> yeah. taking place from the, those attempting to make the rescue and the miners trapped. Right, the, the, the first communication. So when they first drilled the air hole down on that first day and a half, they heard what they thought might be banging on the pipe back. So they were guessing that somebody was still alive. At least one person was alive down there banging. They didn't know if they would make it for all these, you know, three and a half days. But 
Um, finally, there was silence, so people were digging and they, they held up their hands. Everybody needed to be silent at this site. They put down a communication device and the, the guy at the top said, are you the miners? And one of the sarcastic miners said, no, we're Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Who do you think we are? Of course we're the miners. <laughs> and um, and uh, would they laugh about that now? But they were eager to get out, and they were all okay. Amazing to have that type of sarcasm and sense of humor in, in that moment. I'll ask you finally, as you went back there and you juxtaposed that with the footage that we're seeing here from that celebratory night, what type of emotions flooded back for you? Uh, for me personally, oh my goodness, um, just as it's been 20 years, and again, I had covered the 9-11 story, and it was tragic, and we still weren't really emotionally recovered from that, being on the scene there and thinking about all of that. And then to have this ending, um, it was shocking. And I know I was on camera. I had no idea that I was on camera, thanks to our director who just decided to punch me up without letting me know. We did not have monitors. And I kind of screamed. I couldn't believe all nine were alive. And the jubilation and the answer to prayer that was, it's just a career highlight. And I've covered a lot of things, interviewed a lot of fascinating people, but being there for that moment and now knowing the, the men and interviewing them and I talk to them, uh, it, it just what a wonderful career highlight. And there will, I can't imagine anything beating this. You think about all of the stages of it, too, from uh, the impact, emotional impact, when you first hear about it, you fear the worst. Oh, then yeah. there's that level of uncertainty where you're, you don't know what's happening or you're knowing very little, to the end, to the aftermath, and once again, the celebration that we're seeing there. Yeah, it was just an honor. As I always say, it's a privilege to be working at this television station, covering local news uh, that, that makes such a difference in people's lives. Uh, something like this, though, is something that will, is just a highlight. I'll never forget it. What an answer to prayer. All nine made it out. Just miraculous things all coming together. When I interviewed the miners when they first were rescued, and then when I interviewed them now, they kept saying the same thing. It was the people above ground that never gave up, that made the difference. They are the heroes. Give them a lot of credit. And so I always try to mention that. It's just the people above ground that kept going without sleep, digging. Here you see a picture of them. They didn't really know for sure. And then just the jubilation, all their work paid off. Uh, again, they, they moved ahead not knowing for sure what they were going to find, and they found a miracle. An event and a moment that we'll always remember, and one of those type of events that you remember where you were. You were there to see it unfold in person, and we appreciate you offering this perspective and look back 20 years later. I love it. For Michelle Wright, I'm Ryan Recker. We thank you for logging on to watch.